In this module, we will focus on how to do peer assessment in a classroom setting as well as in an online or blended setting. So, in the module on why to do peer assessment, we looked at some recommendations which talked about what are the conditions for an assessment system to support learning. And these conditions are that the learners have to actively participate in productive activities, the effort of assessment should be distributed across topics, across weeks, the communication of expectations for assessment should be clearly given and frequent detailed and quick feedback needs to be given. What we will do in this module is to look at some techniques on how to actually address each of these conditions. In a peer assessment activity, students first do an assignment and submit their work and then they are asked to review their classmates or their peers work. One recommendation is that the activities that we assign for students to review should be productive. What this means is that suppose we give students recall level questions and ask them to assess their peers work or if we give them cookbook lab reports which contain um, strict regimented procedures and ask them to assess their peers work. Such activities are not known to be productive. Instead, activities or assignments that are known to be productive for learning when done using peer assessment are those which contain non-routine problem solving activities create level assignments where students perhaps do a project or do an experiment and write a report on it. The focus in all these activities is on the process, not merely on the final product. So, if the focus is on what is the correct answer, that is not a meaningful or productive activity for peer assessment. On the other hand, if it is a complex problem where students are asked to focus on the steps of problem solving, that is known to be more productive. Similarly, what we need to ask students to do is to focus not merely on the grade or the marks, but on what sort of learning, what sort of process is happening in the activity. The next recommendation is that we need to provide sufficient opportunity for students to practice assessing their peers work. Thus, peer assessment is not a one time or one shot activity. We should repeat it regularly and we should discuss what happened in those activities. Some instructors do it once a week. You can do it maybe that frequently or at least a few times in the semester. The results of the peer assessment activity should be provided on a timely basis. So, what this means is that an assignment has to be given to students, they submit their work, the peer assessment begins and the peer assessment gets completed all within a fairly short and in a fairly timely manner. This effort should be distributed across various topics and over weeks. It is not something that happens all together at some point. One way to do so is to take a large assignment such as a project that you may have uh, envisioned for your class and break it up into smaller pieces and some pieces can be given as peer assessment. Another really important recommendation for peer assessment to work successfully. As an instructor, you have to set clear and easy to follow expectations for the students to follow. This means that the goals and expectations for the assessment have to be clearly stated up front. And if you recall, these goals need to be aligned to the course outcomes. This is known as constructive alignment. Only when the goals for assessment are aligned to your course outcomes, only then is this a meaningful and effective activity. The goals and expectations and standards should be high, should be challenging for learners. So, set and convey these high standards, these expectations and then assign the peer assessment activity. How to do so? One method that people have recommended is to use descriptive rubrics which you have encountered in the previous weeks and not only use rubrics, but also illustrate how the students should use the rubrics. For example, how to use rubrics to review their peers work. 
It is also recommended that you show exemplars which are like ideal solutions which uh, in fact uh, manifest target performance levels given in the rubrics and so on. One of the most important criteria to make sure that peer assessment is an effective and meaningful activity is that we need to ensure constructive and detailed feedback from one student on their peers work. So, the purpose of the feedback is as follows, it, ha it has three different aspects. The feedback has to, so let, let us say one student is reviewing their peers work and giving feedback on it. So, the student who is the reviewer has to give feedback on where the other students work is at this point. It should tell them where they need to go as a learner. So, this is the target or the expected levels and the feedback should help them get there. So, this feedback has to encompass all these three aspects. What we need to do as instructors is to help our student reviewers give feedback for each of these three aspects. The feedback should be sufficient in volume, it should not only be of total marks. Instead, if you use something like rubrics, you can ensure that the feedback addresses various aspects or various dimensions. To give you an example, when you have a project, there are various dimensions of the project. Uh, are the goals set, are the methods used, are the results in place and so on. So, there should be feedback for each of these different dimensions, not just a single total mark. Similarly, the feedback should ideally be verbal and descriptive. It is possible to give detailed feedback only when it is verbal and descriptive, whereas numerical feedback, it is difficult to give detailed feedback using just numbers. The feedback should be specific. It should not say something like this is wrong or you need to improve. Instead, if you recall the previous slide, the feedback should talk about each of these aspects, the current state, the expected of desired state, the target state and how to get there. This feedback should help the learner whose work is being assessed, it should help them take action on how to improve. So, it should give them specific points on what they should do next. And needless to say, as instructors we all know this, but I still would like to repeat it, this feedback should be about the work and how to improve the work and it is not about the person. If you recall this faculty development program, you as participants have participated in peer assessment activities in multiple places. In week 2, there was a Moodle activity where you assessed your peers work, you assessed uh, or you reviewed your pink pair share activities. You also participated in peer assessment activities during the face to face interaction over the weekend. So, at this point, let us take a reflection spot pause. So, think, pause the video at this point and think and write your answers to the following questions. As a learner of this FDP course, how did the peer assessment activities you did in Moodle and you did uh, in the face to face interaction, how did these activities help you? learn the topics of this course, which is how to teach in online and blended format. Then wear the hat of a reviewer and ask yourself, was the feedback you provided to your peers, was it constructive based on the criteria that we discussed a couple of slides ago. So, pause this video, write the answers and then continue. To conclude, let us look at some ways of conducting peer assessment in a blended scenario. So, a blended scenario has a classroom component, online component, various different components and so on. So, in the classroom as we discussed, you can give assignments to students or projects and you can ask them to review their peers work using rubrics. In the online setting, some available resources are the workshop module in Moodle, which wherein you can actually code rubrics, you can give rubrics in this workshop module. You can do peer assessment using the discussion forums on Moodle or on other uh, similar online platforms. 
and you can use wiki annotations to give feedback in a peer assessment format. Within the IIT Bombay X platform, you can use open response assessments to give feedback in the peer assessment module. Thank you.